Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. The latest battle in the trade war between China and the United States has just been announced today. It's a shot across the bow with the rare earth metals being at the center of the battle between the U.S. and China. And it looks like earth, rare earth metals are China's trump card in its trade war with the United States. So let's explore this and see how it could or how it may or may not affect precious metal prices and uh, get an idea of kind of what these earth metals are and how they're used and uh, why China has such a trump card it can play in this particular uh, battle scenario. <laughs> Before we do so, let's take a look here and see exactly what these rare earth elements are and their uses. We can see here from geology.com that China is by far the, uh, the largest producer of these metals and minerals in the rare earth uh, category here, especially since 2000. It's pretty amazing that the production almost completely dropped off there <clears throat> here in 2000. And that could have been because of NAFTA, who knows. Uh, but uh, it wasn't long before then when China and the U.S. were pretty much on par with each other. Now it looks like China dominates in this field. Although we see here after 2010, there's been some production in the United States of rare earth uh, elements. So what are these rare earth elements? They are a group of 17 chemical elements that occur together in the periodic table, as you can see here, outlined in orange. The group consists of yttrium and the 15 lanthanonide elements, uh, which includes neodymium. Most of us are aware of that rare earth element because it, it is uh, used in magnetism and what we call rare earth magnets, much of which are used to test our silver with. Um, for what's called diamagnetism. Scandium is found in, in most rare earth element deposits and is sometimes classified as a rare earth element. But the rare earth elements are all metals and the group is often referred to as a rare earth metals. These metals have very many similar properties and that often causes them to be found together in geologic deposits. They're also referred to as rare earth oxides because many of them are typically sold as oxide com compounds. So here is really where things get interesting and in what the use for these rare earth elements are. They're alloys that contain, um, they're metals and alloys that contain, that are used in many devices that people use every day, such as computer memory, DVDs, rechargeable batteries, cell phones, catalytic converters, magnets, fluorescent lighting, and much more. A lot in the glass um, area as well. Uh, during glass and lens, during the past 20 years, there has been an explosion in demand for many items that require rare earth metals. 20 years ago, there were very few cell phones in use, but that number has risen to over 7 billion in use today. That's almost a phone per person. The, uh, the use of rare earth elements in computers has grown almost as fast as cell phones. And here we can see here the uses of the rare earth elements. The, very, the large, vast majority of them are used as catalysts, with the second highest being in ceramics and glass, and, uh, and then glass and polishing as another 5% there and metallurgy and uh, alloys being the next component here with uh, all the other uses making up another 15% there. Many rechargeable batteries are made with rare earth compounds. So demand for batteries is being driven by demand for portable electronic devices such as cell phones, portable computers, and cameras. Several pounds of rare compounds are in batteries that power every electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle. As concerns for energy independence, climate change, and other issues drive the sale of electric and, and hybrid vehicles, demand for batteries made with rare earth compounds will climb even faster. <clears throat> so you can see the, uh, the usage from the United States usage of rare earth metals uh, in this. This is from the, from the USGS, which is also in this chart up here 
But this is interesting in how it's used in defense as well, these minerals, such as night vision goggles, amplifiers and fiber optic data transmission, precision guided weapons, and uh, permanent magnets that are uh, stable in high temperatures. And uh, of course, it talks about how they're not really all that rare. Thulium and lutetium are the two least abundant rare earth metals, but they each have an average crustal abundance that is nearly 200 times greater than the crustal abundance of gold. However, these metals are very difficult to mine because it's unus unusual to find them in concentrations high enough for economic extraction. And so what happens is, and it turns out that China is, is in the, and when you look at the history of the rare earth production and trade, China has dominated the market here. So that leads us to the story of the day, and that is, is that rare earth minerals are now at the center, at the forefront of the trade war with China. China has been signaling that it, it may restrict the export of rare earth minerals to the United States as a trade conflict between the two countries escalates, according to the BBC. It is by far the largest producer of these raw materials, vital for many American industries, including high growth sectors such as electric car and wind turbine production. Last year, the U.S. Geological Survey designated these minerals critical to the economy and national defense. China is seriously considering restricting rare earth exports to the U.S., tweeted the editor of Chinese state-run Global Times this week. And here we can see an image of some of these in powder form. And then it goes in and talk about these minerals and, uh, and their output. But here you can see from this chart that I think gives uh, a, a clear-cut look at over the past few years here since 2012 that over the total production, China dominates with the production of these, with Australia falling behind in third, and uh, United States is ramping up a little bit, but not by much. <clears throat> Last year, almost 90% of the processing into usable oxides was done in China. An Australian company operating in Malaysia produces almost all the rest. So for the past five years, China's exports of rare earth oxides have almost doubled, according to the official Chinese stats. So, the, about 80% of rare earths imported by the United States comes from China, according to the U.S. government data. Estonia, France, and Japan also supply processed rare earths to the U.S., but the original ore comes from China. The one rare earth mine operating in the United States sends its ore to China for processing and already faces a 25% import tariff imposed by China. So we're already getting hurt, hurt by that, as we don't process it here. And so that leads, leads to the question about what is this going to do? What's going to happen? Now, right now, it's just a threat. We can see that from other headlines here uh, that, you know, about this particular thing of this dispute here. And, in, um, and CBS News is calling it a threat right now. That will change the course, possibly, in the negotiations. We'll see how this thing comes out. Uh, but it is obviously very important these minerals are. But if we go back here and look at this uh, this this uh, pie chart here, we can see that 55% of them make up catalyst. So what could that mean for precious metals? Well, as you know, platinum and palladium are mainly used as catalyst. Could their use widen, or could mining of these metals be uh, increased and potentially? depending and maybe even domestic production. We do have a palladium mine here in the United States, Stillwater Mines. And could we produce some of that to help with the shortfall until we get some mining and processing done in our country or work with other countries to increase their output of these rare earth elements? They're abundant in the earth crust, but they're difficult to mine. China does it cheaply. And uh, so either way, the cost of these products would go up whether or not you use rare earths or potentially platinum and palladium to replace. And that is if it's possible to be done. You know, I'm sure some studies would need to be done to see. Either way, it's going to be more expensive. However, if they do choose to use platinum and palladium, if it's possible scientifically and logically or logistically, then you will see um, um, the demand for platinum and palladium increase all the more, causing their price to go up. Um, and that way they could possibly pass the parity of gold and continue to climb. Now, silver could possibly 
potentially be a part of that and maybe for some of these uses uh especially with a uh, you know depending on the, you know with what is ceramics glass potentially metallurgy and alloys could silver be used to replace some of it i kind of doubt it but there is a potential that may find a way to get that in there you know all of this is happening at a time where uh, research is really being conducted and progress is trying to mass produce graphene which is a carbon-based materials that could be used as catalysts. I think we're a ways away from that. So I think in the medium term, not necessarily the short term, but the medium term, if this does occur, uh, it will push the United States and other countries to decrease their dependence on China for these rare earth metals. And uh, it could potentially cause a, an increase in platinum and platinum demand and therefore prices. It'll be interesting to see how this all plays out and the latest shot across the bow in the trade war with China. Post your thoughts below about the rare earth metals themselves and about the trade war and what's going on there and where you think this will lead precious metals. And I think it could possibly bring some concern just for the overall markets and that could potentially cause gold and silver prices to go up independent of industrial applications. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.